Welcome to the Probate Nation. Probate is a process to transfer ownership of probate assets to the beneficiaries of a deceased person. Not all assets are probate assets, and there are different types of probate, some simple, others more complicated. Like a journey on a slow-moving steam engine train, probate has a beginning, several stops along the way, and at the end of the trip, the balance of the probate assets are delivered to the decedent's beneficiaries. Some probate train rides are short, while other probates seem to never end. Our show this evening focuses on the probate journey which begins at the Fairfax County Courthouse. We start with an overview of Virginia probate and a discussion of probate basics. We will cover in detail the steps to be taken to get qualified to administer an estate along with the appointment paperwork that is needed to do so. Anyone getting qualified will need to be bonded and whether with bond or without surety, so that will be covered as well. And finally, we will address some of the extra steps necessary if the person getting qualified is a non-resident of Virginia. We are pleased to have with us this evening Deputy Clerk of Court for the Fairfax County Circuit Court, along with members of the probate office. We will serve as our guide as we begin the journey on the probate train. Our first guest has served as the Chief Deputy Clerk of Court of the Fairfax County Circuit Court since 2013. In that role, she oversees all aspects of the circuit, including its $11 million budget, taking in over a quarter million dollars in revenue annually, a staff of 165 employees, and its many division programs, including probate administration. She is a graduate of Tulane Law School, a member of the Virginia State Bar, the District of Columbia Bar, and the Fairfax Bar Association. She served on the board of directors of the National Association of Clerks, County Recorders, and Election Officials and on the Executive Board of the International Association of Government Officials. She currently sits on the Executive Board of the Virginia Women's Attorneys Association. Please welcome Gerarda Culliford, Chief Deputy Clerk of Court for Fairfax County Circuit Court. Welcome. Thank you, Richard. Wow, what a background. <laughs> you've been, you've got a great, you've been very busy. Busy and you're so, indeed. And you're so young. Well, thank you. <laughs> Well, you know, you've worked as the chief deputy, you know, in really the Virginia's largest trial court and probate court now said for, for seven years. Um, and you've seen how other states handle probate process. Tell us a little bit about how Virginia probate compares with other states. Yeah, that's a great question, Richard. Yeah, it's, it's funny, just neighboring states like the state of Tennessee, very, very different than Virginia. Um, so you could be one state over and in Tennessee have an elected probate judge and see signs every fall for elect your probate judges. But Virginia, in her wisdom, um, has provided administrative probate, which is a little bit more efficient, a little leaner, more agile, and allows the elected clerk of court and his team to go ahead and take care of some of the probate matters, mm -hmm. uh, the less contentious matters. So Virginia is very wise, and she allows for us to have a streamlined probate process through um, uh, clerk-run administrative probate. And we'll see more about that, but it really is true that a lot of things do go very smoothly through the Virginia probate process. But we have grown dramatically in Fairfax County over the last decade or two. How has that affected the probate office? Uh, well, it has. Uh, anybody watching this knows the traffic's worse. Oh, <laughs> well, what that means for our <coughs> probate um, dockets and our probate um, appointments is that we've seen about a 17% increase. Um, some folks are staying, uh, staying in place, living in place, and not moving off because mm -hmm. the value of the home's gone up. So for instance, in, since 2008, we took in about 1,600 uh, wills and in, intestate in, in matters. Okay. But just here last, uh, last year, we took in about 2,200. Oh so we've seen gracious. almost 20% increase wow. in, in the uh, probate office. Wow, that's a lot. Now, some people die with a will, and some people die without a written will. Can you explain the difference for our viewers? Sure. Um, so the legal term is testate versus intestate. Mm -hmm. So when somebody has, during their lifetime, taken the time to write a will and consider um, their family and their assets and figure out how they want to take care of their family after their passing, mm -hmm. uh, they've written a will. That means they have a testate estate. They are in, in, by comparison, we have what are called intestate matters. So those are matters where a person either didn't get around to doing a will or there is no will to be had, and but yet there are still assets. And the Code of Virginia, which I see you have here on your desk, I do. Uh, the Code of Virginia actually sets out exactly who are what we call the heirs at law when there is no will. So Virginia's already thought about it, she's wise, she set out exactly who takes under the law in those circumstances. Okay, well that's good for our viewers to know. Now, 
all the estates probated in Fairfax County, they begin that journey at the Fairfax County Circuit Court. Give us some perspective about how many people qualified last year you know, for the various different types of estates. So um, from the working majority of matters that come through probate, uh, the administrator or the executor is going to have to um, qualify to mm -hmm. then take on the task of administering the estate, taking care of the affairs after the uh, passing. So uh, we had about 1,600 where, uh, that were testate matters and about 500 where the administrator was established through where there was no will. So about 500. So just, just short of a, a third of them are um, in testate matters. There's no wills. Okay. Very good. Now, um, <clears throat> is the growth of Fairfax County and the mm -hmm. aging of its popula population having any other impact on the probate office? Yes, yes. Um, so just like our customer base, our, our neighbors and colleagues in Fairfax um, who are you know, living and, and passing away here in Fairfax, we're also seeing our own staff who really are experts in the probate law um, are retiring. That greatest generation, the boomer, uh, uh, boomer population is retiring. So one thing all local governments um, experiencing, and certainly the clerk's office and the probate office, is we have all these um, long-serving local um, government officials who are, who are retiring after a life's long work in the probate office and now we're sharing that wisdom with this emerging group of young leaders and I think we've got some of those leaders here today so I look forward to you meeting with them. Oh excellent. Well, we're speaking about your whole probate team at the probate office, mm -hmm. can you tell us how the office is staffed? Yes, and we actually have increased our staff uh, due to the increase in the numbers of uh, probate matters that are coming before us. So with that 20% increase, uh, we've added two additional staff, uh, so we're, we're now at about eight to nine employees. And we also have a gracious welcome desk now, a, reception, a dedicated receptionist mm -hmm. who greets customers as they come in uh, in what can be a, um, a difficult time for families. Mm -hmm. So we have a warm and uh, welcoming environment. So I, I would have your listeners and audience members know about that. I think that's very true. I want to thank you very much for taking the time to chat with us for these few minutes here and give us an introduction to what the probate office does and how much they're doing for the citizens of Fairfax County. Thank you very much for coming in. We're going to go to a short break for a public service announcement, and then we'll return and meet some of the members of the Fairfax County Probate Office. Hello. My name is Gerarda Cullifer, and I'm the Chief Deputy Clerk for the Circuit Court in Fairfax, Virginia. I wanted to let you all know that due to some construction on the judicial complex, we encourage all those visiting the probate office or who have jury duty or even coming to the courthouse to fight a traffic ticket. If you have a disability or need handicap parking, please contact the clerk's office and we can make arrangements. Do look for the dedicated surface parking for handicaps as well as handicap parking in the public parking garages. We do want your experience at the courthouse to be as comfortable and as easy as possible. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you at the clerk's office. Welcome back as we continue our discussion with two members of the Fairfax County Probate Office. We are pleased to have with us the manager of the probate division. Prior to joining the probate division, he worked in public services, civil docketing, and case tracking divisions of the circuit court. Overall, he has been with the Fairfax County Circuit Court for 12 years. He's a graduate of George Mason University. Joining him is a senior probate clerk who has been with the Fairfax Probate Division for over six years. He has a master's degree in law from Pune University in India and is a certified paralegal from the Paralegal Institute of Washington, D.C. Prior to joining the Fairfax Circuit Court, she was a practicing attorney in India where she drafted estate planning documents and filed testamentary petitions in the Bombay High Court. Please welcome Jason Pardo, Probate Division Manager, and Arjuna Kawarka, Senior Probate Clerk. Welcome. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Thank, you, for Thank us. you guys for coming. Absolutely. It's nice to see you in this environment rather than seeing you at the probate office. Right. <laughs> a little different. It is a little bit different. Well, Jason, let's get right down to the probate basics. You know, we got a little bit of an introduction from, from Ms. Culifer. Um, what is probate and why is it necessary? Well, probate is the process of administrating an estate whether it's intestate or testate, testing meaning, meaning there is a will, intestate, there is no will. Mm -hmm. uh, when it's testate, we're uh, reviewing the will, admitting the will to record, and, uh, it, and it can be just that. Or if it's something where you actually need to admit the will plus qualify the named executor under the will, 
uh, when it comes to an intestate estate, if it's something simple as just recording a real estate affidavit or maybe something more where you actually need a personal representative to qualify. So it usually will be the heir at law or an heir at law to qualify mm -hmm. as representative of the estate. And that's what probate is, uh, that whole process. And why is it necessary? Uh, whether it's to show transfer on real estate maybe, or if there are personal assets solely left in the decedent's name and they would, uh, you actually need someone to qualify because the company that you're dealing with needs to see some sort of certificate from the court saying you represent the estate. And so that's probably why you'll actually have to come to our office. Okay. Now, what are probate assets? Probate assets would be assets solely in the decedent's name only, um, whether it's a bank account, stocks, vehicles, bonds, assets just solely left in the decedent's name. Okay. And then non-probate assets are, what are those? Uh, th that could be anything that has a beneficiary listed on uh, or accounts that were joint but had right of survivorship on it. Mm -hmm. Any accounts that, had, that were payable on death, transferable on death, those accounts or those assets do not go through probate. Okay. And those are frequently, we refer to those as will substitutes. Um, sometimes they work the right way and sometimes they don't. Um, Archanam, what's the difference between a beneficiary and an heir at law? A beneficiary is a term associated with a will. Okay. Um, it is. Uh, it could be a person or an organization that would receive a portion of a testate estate, meaning when there is a will. Mm -hmm. An heir at law is a term uh, where there is no will, so it could be the decedent's closest relatives and then more distant relatives. And then if there are no heirs at law located, then the probate assets are paid to the Commonwealth of Virginia. So any person who would inherit in the absence of a will or where there is no will is an heir at law. Okay. Now, can anybody act on behalf of an estate? No. Only a court-appointed person can act on behalf of the estate. So in case there is a will, mm -hmm. a person nominated in the will as the executor will have the first right to qualify and act on behalf of the estate. And in case where there is no will, an heir at law would be the person who would have the first right to qualify and get appointed as administrators of the estate. So what do we mean by qualified versus not qualified? Or what qualified or qualification? What do we mean by those terminologies? Okay, so qualification is a process whereby a person is, is officially appointed by the probate clerk to serve as the personal representative of an estate, either with or without a will. Mm -hmm. This involves preparing the necessary paperwork and administering an oath to the personal representative so that they can serve in their capacity. So all personal representatives must qualify before the probate court. And once qualified, then they will have the authority and responsibility to administer the estate. So it's, it's, not, as, it's not just because I'm named in the will or I'm the, I'm the only, only heir at law of, of, of my mom doesn't mean I'm, in, I'm able to, to administer the estate. I've got to actually go to the probate office. Correct. So we're going right. so to talk about that qualification process now, Jason, and, and I turn to you. Sure. How do I begin the probate process in Fairfax so I can get qualified? I mean, the first thing you would do is just give our office a phone call. That's definitely step one. Um, our office number, 703-246-4153. Mm -hmm. uh, give us a call so we can schedule that appointment. We'll ask you some questions over the phone just to verify and confirm that you're actually in the right jurisdiction. Uh, but then we'll, yeah, again, schedule that appointment and have, have you appear on that said date. How long does it take? To, I mean, how long of a time do I have to wait to get an appointment? I mean, at this moment, it, it'll be maybe about two weeks. Uh, it, just, just understand Fairfax County is a large county, and we do have a lot of people. So uh, don't be afraid if that, that wait time might be a little bit more. Sometimes with holidays or, uh, you know, short staff or some people are out, it, it could increase. So, I mean, we're hoping that, you know, it's in between that range. But, uh, yeah, it's about two weeks. Okay. Um, and I, I know that Ms. Colford commented that the, your, your applications have gone up pretty dramatically over the last year or so. Now, what should I bring to my appointment to qualify? Um, well, our website has a great checklist on what to bring to the appointment. Now, we'll just call it to our viewers. We're actually going to show that on the screen, and Jason can just talk about some of the things that are on that list. He won't go over all of those things, but it's a good little place to start. Yeah, and so the main thing uh, to bring, if, if there is a will, bring the original will. Um, uh, we need a certified death certificate. Uh, please bring uh, valid identification. 
we need to know the list of the heirs at law, so we would need their names and addresses. We also need to know the value of estate assets. Um, just a form of payment for the fees and uh, should be good to go. Okay. Now, Archana, where is the probate office located? The probate office is located in room 401, which is on the fourth floor of the Fairfax County Circuit Court building, mm -hmm. and that is in turn located at 4110 Chainbridge Road, Fairfax, Virginia. Okay, so when I arrive for my appointment, what do I do? When you arrive in um, room 401, you will be greeted by the front desk receptionist. There's going to be a clipboard at the receptionist desk where you will have to sign in your name, mm -hmm. record the time of your arrival and the purpose of your visit, then have a seat in the lobby out there. Um, the person who's handling the appointment will come out and call your name and bring you back uh, down the hallway mm -hmm. and will escort you into an office where the probate interview will be conducted. So it's, it's done in private? It is done in private. That's very good. Now what kind of questions may might be asked during a probate appointment? So we ask questions as to what is the total value of the decedent's solely held personal assets and you can give us an approximate dollar amount. You don't have to be exact mm -hmm. provided it's the closest guesstimate that you think. Um, we could ask you questions on what is the value of the decedent's solely held real estate, the location of the real estate, and the percentage owned by the decedent if it is less than 100%. Mm -hmm. um, the names, addresses, and ages of the heirs at law. Did any of the heirs predecease the deceased? Um, because in that case, it would impact who the next in line would be as the heirs at law. Uh, we also ask you if the decedent was, um, if the decedent passed away in a nursing home, where did the decedent reside prior to moving into nursing home and questions like that. Okay. So Jason, what happened during the probate appointment? So, so this is a time where we'll review the documents that are uh, brought to the appointment. So if there is a will, we'll check the will and make sure that the will is valid. Um, if, if something is wrong with the, the will, we'll definitely let the parties know, say if there's something wrong with the self-proving affidavit or something requires a deposition, we'll, let, we'll inform the parties. Uh, if there is no will, uh, we'll you know, verify the person's in error at law, that they can qualify, um, that a certain amount of time has passed in order for them to be uh, eligible to be a personal rep. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, input information into the system have them review it, have the uh, personal rep take an oath as the fiduciary, and then at the end of the appointment, they'll walk away with certificates of qualification as representative of the estate. Okay. Now, I know there is a probate tax, which um, a lot of folks get confused and think it's an estate tax, but it's just a, a, an administrative fee that gets added on to the value of the estate. And I gather that's $1 per thousand of probate assets? Right. And so again, as Archon has said, as long as we don't, you know, we, we give our best estimate and then we can come back and address that later on when we file the inventory with the commissioner. Right. So, Archon, let's talk about bonding with and without, without surety. Why is a personal representative bonded? So according to Virginia law, all personal representatives must be bonded. And bond in simple language is a promise that they have to sign before the court that they will fulfill their duties as required by law. Mm -hmm. And in technical terms, it's just a document which the personal representatives sign acknowledging an obligation to repay money to the estate in the event they do not perform their duties. So Virginia law governs whether a bond is with or without corporate surety. Okay. Now, I know the bonds without surety basically is, is, gives you personal promise to pay, but what are the bonds with surety? A bond with surety or with corporate surety is a bond which is a document signed by the personal representative and an insurance agent mm -hmm. where the insurance company promises to repay money to the estate in the event the personal representative does not perform their duties. Okay. And there is an annual premium on this type of bond which is paid by the estate. So our office can give you information on how to obtain this type of bond. Okay. Now, Jason, when do you see bonds with surety be required? Um, surety would be required mainly with the intested estates when not all heirs qualify. Sure. And if the estate assets are over 25000 it requires a surety bond. Okay. Uh, sometimes it can be required in a will, actually. If it, uh, the testator might require the, the named executor to be bonded with surety. Mm -hmm. uh, it could also be pursuant to a court order as well. 
Now, and I, and I, I, I don't want to gloss over this, because we've, we've done some shows about bonding with surety, but not everybody can necessarily get a bond with surety. So if they're going to come to the office to qualify and they have to get a bond, they may want to contact a bonding company in advance and make sure they're going to be able to get a bond. Otherwise, they'd be making that trip to the office and not be able to get qualified. Com so completely that, agree. Does that happen pretty frequently? It, it does happen, and it's unfortunate when we have to tell them that we can't complete the qualification process because they're not bondable. So there, you guys have a list of the bonding companies that actually take care of that for Fairfax. Yes, we do. And you probably four or five questions that you need to fill out on a little application form that you can send it in advance and they can get you cleared. Yes. Uh, Jace, let's talk about a appointment paperwork, okay? We're now, we're, we've got the bonding, we're going to start doing our stuff. What does the applicant receive to actually prove she has been qualified as the personal representative? Yeah, it's a document that we call a certificate of qualification. Uh, it will have a race seal on it. Uh, some other companies or entities may call it letters of administration or letters testamentary. Mm -hmm. But the certificate of qualification is what the personal representative will use to present to uh, companies or entities to get access to accounts, et cetera. Okay. Now, Archer, how many certificates should I do I get? Mm -hmm. How many should I actually request? Okay. So the first one is free. Every additional certificate is $2 a piece. And uh, depending on what the banks require, if some banks require an original certificate, then yes, the personal representative will need more than one certificate. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to stock too many because if you don't use them within a certain amount of time, some banks and financial institutions may still ask you to get an updated letter of appointment, which is within um, about 60 to 90 days from the date it's issued. That's a very good point. And then people get a bunch and they don't get around to using them right. and they become stale, right. at least as far as the banks are concerned. Correct. Um, so once a person gets qualified and receives their certificates, is there anything further they need to do at the probate office? Yes. So as a part of their duties, once they are qualified, they need to send out estate notices to the beneficiaries under the will mm -hmm. and to the heirs at law, regardless of whether there is a will or not. This notice regarding estate has to be sent out within 30 days from the date that they get appointed. And once they send out these notices, they are then required to file an affidavit of notice back with the probate division stating whom they have notified and when. Mm -hmm. And this has to be filed within four months from the date of, the, uh, from the date of their qualification, and there's a small filing fee due. And of course, if, the, if things change once they file, then they can file an amendment. Correct, they can file an amended affidavit, but yes. that'll be with an additional small filing fee. Sure, of course. Um, Jason, let's talk about, you know, we've talked about getting qualified, and we haven't really talked about the, the elephant in the room. A lot of folks don't live in Virginia. They're non-residents, and they're coming in to qualify what we call the non-resident executors. Can an out-of-state resident um, qualify as the personal representative in a Virginia state? Yes, they can. Uh, however, that individual will need a, a resident agent. Uh, and the resident agent is used as basically that middleman if, in case uh, the personal representative ever needed to be served with documentation. That's where the resident agent uh, comes into play, and that person uh, would forward that on to the personal rep. So, uh, yes, to answer your question, someone outside of Virginia could qualify, but they do require a Virginia resident. Now, if that person can't be with them at the appointment, then we would need like a notarized resident agent form filled out to be brought with them to the appointment. Okay, that's important. Um, now, this all sounds really complicated, Archon, and of course, you being a lawyer by training, do people need to get a lawyer in order to go through this process, at least at this stage? Uh, well, in most cases, they do not need a lawyer because uh, uh, our probate staff is willing to explain the process to them, is able to help them navigate the process, and that is why uh, we can get them appointed without a lawyer. But in unforeseen circumstances where the estate gets complicated, if they are not sure on how to proceed, then yes, they will need to consult an attorney. Okay, I think that's, that's good advice. Proceed cautiously. Well, we're, we're Reaching the end of our time tonight, I um, thought I would solicit some final comments from you folks about some things you want to stress to folks at home that they should keep in mind in, in the process of becoming qualified to administer a, 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 a testate or intestate estate. Jason? Yeah, so the one thing I would stress is to reach out to us. Just give us a phone call so that if, you, if there's any questions that the customer might have, come out, reach out to us so that we could answer it, whether it's a will, a question, anything like that reach out. 
our customer service skill. We would just stress on that, so give us a call. Okay. Arjun, how about yourself? Any final suggestion, point you want to make? Um, yes, I would like to emphasize on jurisdiction. So if a customer is looking for a court-appointed document appointing the person as a personal representative of the estate, then they have to go to the county court in which the deceased last resided at the time of death and not to the court where they happen to reside or simply where the asset is. Um, so nursing homes are not regarded as a person's residence, whereas assisted living facilities are regarded as a person's residence. Okay, those are good points. I want to thank you both for sharing all this valuable information with us today. I mean, it's really, really very technical stuff, and you guys translate it into easy, understandable inf information for our viewers. I want to thank you so very, very much. And I want to tell our viewers, our viewers there are many useful checklists and guides that are up on the probate, on the uh, Fairfax County Probate Office website, and I would encourage you to take a look at those. They're very, very helpful. It would be, be good for you in, in doing your probates. Uh, without a doubt, you know, probate can be complicated and confusing, but Clerk of Court John Fry and Deputy Clerk of Court Gerardo Culifer and the entire probate office staff at the Fairfax County Circuit Court have made the qualification process user-friendly for those who need to probate at an estate in Fairfax County. Beginning when you call them with questions or to make an appointment, to when you walk through the front door of room 401 and are greeted by the front desk receptionist and sign in at the front desk for your appointment to when you are greeted by a probate clerk and are escorted to their office to start the probate interview, to when you leave the probate office with your certificate of qualification in hand and, out, and head out the courthouse back to your car. Each step has been organized to make this a pleasant but efficient experience. And be sure to check out all the useful guides, forms, and checklists they have assembled on the Fairfax Circuit Court website for your use both before and after you start a probate. And getting qualified in the probate office is an important and often necessary step to begin the probate of an estate. So as, you, as your probate train pulls out of the station, tooth the train horn and congratulate yourself on a job well done. On behalf of the Probate Nation, we thank you for visiting with us today and wish you good luck on your probate journey.